Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be going through amplitude. So in the last video, we went through frequency and period. So we're kind of mostly dealing with AC waveforms here, something to bear in mind in terms of electricity. So when we're dealing with amplitude, there's a few things that we need to know before we really get into the, the nitty gritty part of it all. So I'm just going to cover a bunch of terms here just to kind of get you up to scratch with everything. So the one that you're probably already familiar with is a full cycle. This refers to the whole one cycle of a wave, which I'm guessing you already know. For example, if you had a sine wave there, then that would be one whole cycle. What we need to go into is we also have what are called half cycles. Okay, so a half cycle is this here. That's one half cycle. And here's another half cycle. Okay, so that's something that you need to keep in mind. We then detail these even further by saying that this is, we then detail these even further by saying that this is the positive half cycle. Okay, and then obviously this is the negative half cycle. Now, if you remember, we referred to in the previous video, which if you haven't watched, if I remember to, I'll link it here. In the previous video, we discussed how the unit circle is used for waveforms. And we discussed how this point here of the sine wave would be 360 degrees or two pi. And we discussed that this point here is 180 degrees or pi, right? So very important to keep in mind when it comes to any sine wave, the positive half cycle is going to be between zero and 180 degrees. And the negative half cycle is going to be between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, so we've discussed this previously in the last video, but there are also some other things that you need to think about in terms of how we speak about the amplitude. So the first and most obvious one is its peak. So obviously the peak voltage or peak current is the furthest point away from the uh, mean average of the, of the waveform. So it's the highest amount of voltage or current. So in this instance here, we've got 12 volts. So the peak voltage here is gonna be equal to 12 volts. If you remember in terms of our new unit circle and in terms of our degrees, you know, the whole wave being 360 degrees, then we know that the peak is always going to be at 90 degrees of the sine wave. And you can see how now, as I start describing the sine wave in terms of degrees, you can see how useful it is to say, okay, well, the peak is just 90 degrees of the sine wave. And the reverse peak is always going to be at minus 200, at, sorry, at, and the reverse peak here is always going to be at 270 degrees okay so the first thing we need to keep in mind is peak right next thing is peak to peak again we discussed this in the last video the peak to peak is the value from 90 degrees all the way down to 270 degrees one thing you can always be sure of is that the peak to peak is always going to be two times the peak because obviously sine waves, they're symmetrical across the zero axis. So whatever the peak is here, then the peak to peak value is going to be two times that. So once you know the peak value, then you can just times by two and that will give you the peak to peak value. So in this instance here, the peak value of this sine wave is 12 volts. The peak to peak value will be 24 volts. Okay, the next thing you need to be aware of is instantaneous value. This one's a mouthful, but it's nothing special. It's basically you take this sine wave here and pick any value that you want on this sine wave. So here, for example, this is probably going to be, you know, like 160 degrees in terms of our unit circle and our 360 degrees. You could pick, for example, here, 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 wherever you picked on this sine wave here, any one point on that sine wave is the instantaneous value. So what we could say, for example, is that the instantaneous value of any sine wave one quarter of the way through is equal to the peak value. Right. You got that. We could also say any instantaneous value halfway through the sine wave is here and that's going to be equal to 180 degrees. OK, so you'll see instantaneous value referred to it like that. The next one is average value. Now this one can get a little bit confusing, but whenever we're, whenever we're talking about average values, if it relates to sine waves, then we're only ever talking about the average value of half of, 
a cycle. So if we if we go back to what half a cycle is, right? We've got half cycles here. We've got a positive and negative. When we're talking about average values, we're only talking about half of a cycle. Hopefully that should be fairly obvious to you. The reason why is because all of these values across one side here are going to be equal to, but just the inverse, the reverse of all of these values here. So if we take the average of a bunch of positive values and then take the average of a bunch of negative values, what do we get? We get zero. So there's no use in the average of a sine wave of across the whole full cycle is always going to be zero. So we have no use in that. But what we do is we take the average value of of half of a cycle. And that, that that's actually a lot more useful. OK, and then the final one that you need to be aware of is RMS value. And this one is going to be the topic on my next video, because this is this is going to be an important one that we're going to go into. and We're going to use a lot. So I'm going to go into a lot more detail into it. But just for the sake of this video and keeping things a bit generic, the RMS value, it, it's it means root mean squared value. And um, the way to look at the RMS value is that it's the DC equivalent. So if you think of, for example, a DC wave like this here, let's say it's nine volts. So what, what the RMS value is, it's the DC version, the direct current or direct voltage, um, non-varying voltage or current version of this AC sine wave, okay? Yeah, so it's it's like a way of working out an equivalent and to from AC to DC. And so, like I said, we'll go into that a lot more deep in a lot more detail in the next video. I don't want to get too much in the weeds here. Try and keep this generic. And the next video, we'll go into root mean squared values a bit more. So very, very interesting stuff, though. And it's, it's super easy to understand. So don't worry about it. OK, so we discussed the unit circle in a bit of detail in the last video. I'm just going to go over it again because there is a specific way in which we use the unit circle in amplitude as well. So let's just bring back up the unit circle. All right, so you've got zero degrees here. You've got 360 degrees here, 90, right? 180, 270, and then 360, right? And in terms of pi, we could do it as 180 is pi, 360 degrees is two pi, 90 degrees is pi divided by two, 270 degrees is three pi divided by two. Okay, so the exact same way that we use this unit circle in terms of the sine wave and using it for period, similarly we use it for amplitude as well. So one thing we need to probably go over is when you're thinking in terms of, you need to go back to trigonometry here. In terms of the sine of an angle, let me just write this down. So the sine of an angle, and if you don't, if you don't know this already, don't worry about it. Just take my word for it. Or if you want to, you can go back and prove it. But it's the sine of an angle is when you, when you in terms of the unit circle it's always the y coordinate of the circle the sine of an angle is always the y coordinate of a circle okay now when we're dealing in terms of radians this point here is one radian right one radian okay in terms of because we're dealing with circles and the unit the unit circles obviously refers to one the unit and so the sine of 90 degrees is always equal to one. The sine of 90 degrees is equal to one. If you want to check that, type that into your calculator, you'll see that. Okay, so if we've got a standard sine wave, then what we know is that the sine of 90 degrees, which is here, is equal to one. At this point, the peak of any of a sine wave of voltage or current is one. So the peak is always equal to one. Okay. And the other peak over here at 270 degrees is equal to minus one. So keep in mind that one is the max current of voltage, right? It's the max voltage or the max current. Now minus one represents the maximum reverse, right? Voltage or current. Okay. So keep that in mind. So here's where things get really amazing. You can pick any point on this sine wave. So for example, you know, here at 45 degrees, you know, here at 180, you know, here at 360, 270, 90, you know, 170, it doesn't matter, any point, right? So let's, for example, we'll go over 170 degrees, have 170 degrees. We can find out the exact voltage of this sign of this instantaneous point, 170 degrees using 
what we know about the unit circle and the peak being one, which is truly amazing. So what we do is we take the sign of the of the degree of the instantaneous point. We take the sign of that and we multiply it by the max voltage. OK, so if we wanted to find this point here. The sign of. Sorry, the, the value of 170 degrees on this sine wave, we've said that the peak is 12 volts. So what we do is we take sine 170 and we multiply that by the voltage maximum, which we've already said is 12 volts. So it's just 12 volts. Okay. So let's find the sine of 170. Sine 170 is equal to 0 0.1736481. Okay. Then we multiply that by 12 volts. And that gives us a voltage of 2.08 volts. And if you think about it here, if this up here is 12 volts, then this down here is going to be about 2 volts. So we can do the same. Let's let's do the same for about 2. We'll go over here, 250. So this, the vo we're going to find the voltage at 250. So we just take sine 250, multiply by that by the max voltage, which is 12 volts, and that will give us sine 250 times by 12, and that gives us a reverse voltage or current voltage of 11.276 volts. And if you think about it here, you can see how this if this is my minus 12 volts, negative 12 volts, this would be 11 point wherever it was uh, 27 volts. And so you can see now this stuff is truly amazing because one is going to equal the peak voltage. And think about it like this, right? If you did the same thing for 90 degrees, so let's say you did sine 90 times by 12. Well, what's sine 90? We've already said part of the unit circle. The sine of 90 is one, right? So 1 times 12 is equal to what? 12. So the peak voltage is 12 volts. Right, and we could do the same for a sine of 270. Times that by 12. So we know already that it's going to be equal to sine of 270 is minus 1. But let's just show you on a calculator anyways. So sine of 270 is minus 1. There you go. Times minus 1 by 12. And that gives you minus 12 volts. Amazing, right? Okay. So in the next video, we're going to RMS voltages hopefully you enjoyed that one i did i quite like this stuff so yeah shall see you guys in the next one thanks for watching